While activities uh, on the space station continue uh, with the complex in overall excellent uh, shape, there's a uh, uh, what's known as a big move planned uh, beginning tonight uh, here in the Clear Lake Houston area, an iconic piece of NASA's history which never flew in space, but without it, proving the aerodynamic flight qualities of the space shuttle would have been very difficult, as would have been moving the orbiters from coast to coast for refurbishment and upgrades between missions. The Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft with the call sign NASA 905 that handled most of the shuttle ferry flights has been retired and now will make its home at Space Center Houston, just down the road from the Johnson Space Center. I recently talked with Paul Spana, exhibits manager at Space Center Houston, and I asked him why the visitor center wanted the SCA. We want it because we're, we are NASA's Johnson Space Center official visitor center, and it's our responsibility to represent NASA, to be a, a gateway for the visitors to come in and learn about Johnson Space Center and all the work that goes on here. So. That's the next step in, in our progression of the timeline of the history of NASA after Apollo, um, the shuttle program. And the shuttle program went on for, for 30 years, and, and we wanted to uh, represent that in, in a great way. And the ability to have the, sim or the opportunity, I should say, to have the SCA there is an awesome way to be able to display that and tell a piece of that history of the program. What did it take to actually get the uh, SCA at Space Center Houston, and not necessarily the move yet, but right. just to just to get to this point. There was a lot of work just to get to this point. We started a um, year and a half, almost two, two years ago. Um, we worked very closely with NASA, at Johnson Space Center. Um, there was a lot of work that Johnson Space Center had to do on, on this end to make it all possible for us. And they helped lay the groundwork to, to make that possible. So the plane came to Houston it was presented to us, the opportunity was there, um, and then it was up to us at Space Center Houston to right. uh, to make sure that uh, we could get it from Ellingson Airport over to um, our visitor center. Well, now let's talk about moving a 747. I mean, anybody who's seen a 747 obviously knows how large this aircraft is, and, and obviously, you know, they've seen the, the iconic moves with a space shuttle on the back, but... Right but now you have to move it from one location to another, from Ellington to Space Center Houston. What, what, what is it taking to do that? You know, it, it's amazing how big it is. I, th I think the average person, their only experience with a, an aircraft is being inside of it, and on the outside of it, it's walking through the jetway. So it, it's, it's an awesome feeling to be standing kind of surreal underneath the airplane, especially one that's that, that large. Right. We've been working on the airplane for uh, almost two months now, around the clock, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, taking big pieces off. And it's amazing with as much of the huge pieces we've taken off, it's still big. This was all made possible by the Boeing company because they agreed to donate their services to take it apart and put it back together again and make it look like it had never been taken apart. So the planning for that started back in uh, August of, of last year. So. We have a team right. at Space Center Houston, and we've been working very closely with Boeing. Starting then, um, the first was to secure it for any possible hurricanes as we were entering into hurricane season. Then after that, we started coming up with a detailed plan on how we were going to dissect it and take it apart. There is a, uh, a team of special mechanics that came in from Boeing called the Aircraft on Ground Team. It's kind of like their special forces of mechanics. Uh, they came in, and what they did was they first took, they started taking apart the wings, not removing them yet, but taking off flaps. And there was a lot of work that they had to do to get ready to take the wings off. So for almost six weeks, they were working on, on the plane. There was always somebody working on the wings that entire time. First thing that came off was the landing gear. The plane was jacked up. The landing gear was removed. The, and then they started working on the tail. They took the vertical stabilizer off, the main one, and NASA had modified the plane with two more vertical stabilizers. Right. Those came off. The horizontal stabilizer came off in one piece. And then uh, two sections of the rear of the fuselage came off, and each one's about 18 feet long. So that left us with the fuselage, which is 190 feet long. That'll be the largest piece that we move. All the pieces now are loaded. There's seven loads. The fuselage, 
seven loads. Now these are on trucks, obviously. They're on uh, trailers. For Some will be towed by trucks. Four of the trailers are hydraulic trailers, which have the ability to raise and lower. Each one has about 144 wheels. They're, they can be independently steered. Of those specialty type trailers, there's, there's four of those. Um, two for the wings, one for the fuselage, and the fourth one is for the, the main vertical stabilizer. The others are on uh, something typical of what you would see out on the highway, regular tractor trailer trailers. Okay, so now you're, you're ready to move. Now the actual move, the route that it's got to take. Presently, the aircraft is, is sitting at, in this remote corner of Ellington Field. So um, we're going to move this convoy. And the convoy altogether, when you line up all these trailers, it's about 1,000 feet long. We're going to move across the, uh, the airfield and get to the other side of the west side of the airfield in, in preparation for the move, which happens on, on Monday. So Monday afternoon, we'll cut out a section of the fence at, at the airfield and move up to the intersection of Highway 3 and uh, Challenger 7, which is also Dixie Farm Road. And uh, we'll be staged for the move at 9 o'clock on Monday night. The move happens, obviously, which is going to be a spectacle in itself. But uh, talk a, a little bit about why the move now, the final plans for this exhibit, what it's going to look like. What it's, when you drive up to Space Center Houston, what you're going to see is the 747 uh, reassembled. It will have a high-fidelity replica of a shuttle, and the name of our orbiter is Independence. Right. It'll be mounted on top. And then on the side of it is a 60-foot tower, which houses two elevators and a flight of stairs. And this tower will provide you access to the 747. That will be one stop. And then you can continue on to two more stops to go up to, to the shuttle. And you'll be able to go into the, uh, the flight deck as well as the mid deck. And when, what is your projection for that being open, you think? Our goal is to open it in around spring break of 2015, so less than a year away from now. So less than a year that uh, after this move that we'll be able to see that. And, uh, and uh, it is definitely going to be a spectacle for those that haven't had an opportunity to see it before. It's, it's really going to be unique. And, Paul, we really appreciate you stopping by and talking about the whole plan uh, for what's in store, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing that. Um, it's always good to see you again, and all the best on the big move. Thank you. Thank you very much.